In today's episode, a newlywed couple adopt a pet chimp named Travis, who later grew into a savage killer. After years of showing no signs of aggression or violence, one day Travis snapped, resulting in a terrifying and brutal attack on his owner. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the horrifying story of Travis the Killer Chimpanzee. Welcome to Final Affliction. Jerome and Sandra Harold were a devoted couple who lived in Stamford, Connecticut. They were a lovely family with only one daughter named Susan. Susan was soon married, eloping with her husband, and the once lively and busy house was reduced to quietness. On October 24, 2003, the lonely couple got tired of the boredom and bought a three-day-old chimp for $50,000. The chimp, whom they named Travis, after Sandra's favorite country music star Travis Tritt, lived with the couple at their home. The couple bathed, bottle-fed, dressed, and even brushed Travis's teeth. They loved and adored the chimp, treating him as their own surrogate baby. He had brought a renewed sense of purpose and liveliness into the house, providing something to keep the couple busy following their daughter's departure. As Travis grew, he embraced the ways of his human parents, learning how to decipher their verbal and nonverbal language. The couple had to restructure their house to accommodate the fast-growing chimp. They created a huge room and hung swinging tires on ropes for Travis to play and roam. He was ever busy swinging and jumping on the couch and bed as the couple worked on other errands. At the dinner table, Travis had a seat and a stemmed wine glass. He took his meals with the family. The couple had really pampered him. Soon, everyone in Stamford knew him. Neighbors and the police held and waved at Travis whenever they saw him. His friendly nature won the residents' hearts, and within no time, he was a local celebrity. He could dress himself, feed hay to the horses, open locked doors with a key, as well as water plants. To him, technology was a curious feat that he strived to learn. His love for baseball had him mastering watching TV using the remote control. The chimp could also boot and log into the family computer and browse pictures. He had a weak spot for ice cream, which had him memorizing the days and times that the ice cream truck passed by the house. In 2003, the couple headed to town to replenish their supplies, carrying Travis in the back seat with his window partially open. They were stuck in traffic when a person walking past threw an empty soda can into the car, hitting Travis. Calmly, Travis unbuckled his seatbelt, unlocked the car door, and chased after the culprit. However, Travis didn't catch up with him. He then knuckle-walked to the tarmac, lay on his stomach, and started rolling bringing the traffic to a halt. The traffic officers had to call for backup as the drivers and other locals were treated to a humorous chase. Travis smiled as he skidded and jumped over cars, evading the over a dozen police officers after him. The chase went on for almost two hours before a tired Travis finally walked himself back into the car and buckled his seatbelt. This incident led to the Connecticut authorities passing a law that ordered no resident to own a pet primate weighing more than 50 pounds. Travis was luckily exempted from the rule because the Heralds had owned him for long and the authorities believed he posed no risk. Unfortunately, in 2004, a year after this incident, Jerome Harold lost his battle with stomach cancer. This left Sandra and Travis who saw Jerome as his alpha, deeply devastated. The home was once again covered by a cloud of sadness as Sandra was down in the dumps. However, that wasn't the only pressing issue, as soon enough, officers from the Stamford Animal Control Department started knocking at her door. The officers were concerned for Sandra's safety. With Travis transitioning into early childhood, he had now amassed enough strength to equal five muscular men. He was prone to aggression, especially during his adolescence, which meant he would be hard and harmful for Sandra to control. 
The animal control officers advised Sandra that keeping the chimp in the coming years was impractical. Having never shown any signs of aggression or violence, Sandra was not worried. With grief over her gone husband gripping her like a vice, Sandra sunk into depression, halting all her social activities and communication. She spent days sitting and rocking back and forth on her chair by their yard as she watched the sunsets. Her unstable and vulnerable condition had profound effects on Travis, who spent his days eating snacks as he watched TV. He never left the house, and with little to no physical activity, Travis found himself ghastly obese at 240 pounds. His once shiny face had turned black, full of wrinkles. His chest had shifted from sturdy to flabby as hair loss took over. On Sunday, February the 15th, 2009, Sandra picked up her phone and rang her close friend Charla Nash, inviting her for a lively chat. Sandra and Charla had been friends for years, and she was a frequent visitor to the Herald's house. Travis knew Charla, having seen her uncountable times. After catching up, the two left Travis alone and headed to Mohegan Sun Casino. They began with the salon and had their hair made before heading for dinner. Afterwards, the duo enjoyed gambling before heading home. On setting foot into the house, an eerie feeling stirred Sandra differently. She noticed that Travis was uninterested in his favorite ice cream. The TV and computer were off, which was odd considering how much Travis loved his shows. Sandra mixed Xanax with the chimp's tea before retiring to bed. The next morning, February 16, 2009, Sandra woke up to find Travis aimlessly romping in the yard. She tried calling him back into the house, but he ignored. Something was off. She immediately rang Charla and informed her of Travis's behavior. Without hesitation, Charla got into her car and sped to Sandra's home to help her get Travis back into the house. She alighted and picked Travis's favorite toy, a red Tickle Me Elmo, that she hoped was a good bait to lure Travis back into the house. The duo, feeling confident in their ability to handle Travis, headed out to the yard. But on seeing his favorite toy, Travis snapped. As if driven by a fierce possessiveness over his favorite toy, Travis lunged forward, throwing Charla to the ground. He then stood over her, and using his massive jaws, he sunk his teeth into her face. As Travis's jaws clamped, Charla let out a chilling scream that echoed through the neighborhood. Travis ripped off her lips and nose and tore her eyelids. Sandra quickly grabbed a shovel and hit Travis several times, but he was unstoppable. He continued biting and attacking Charla, completely crashing her facial structure. Sandra dashed back to the house, grabbed a kitchen knife, and stormed back out to help her friend. Travis was so engrossed in the rampage that he didn't notice Sandra approaching him. With all her might, Sandra plunged the knife into the chimp's back and took a step back. Travis stopped mauling Charla and turned, glaring at Sandra with his eyes wild with rage. He then turned to Charla and continued mauling her as if nothing had happened. Charla could hear the sounds of her own bones snapping as Travis bit off her left hand. She shouted at him, Travis, stop, stop. But Travis was in a frenzy. Seeing the ferocity of Travis and foreseeing that she was going to be next, Sandra got into her car and locked all the doors. Her hands were shaking with fear and her heart pounding in her chest as she fumbled for her phone and called 911. What's the problem? Send the police! Send the police! What's the problem there? The, the chip killed my, my friend! What's the problem with your friend? Oh, please! What's the problem with your friend? I need to know. Send the police up! With a gun! With a gun! He ripped her face off! He ripped her face off? He tried, he tried, he tried to trying to attack me! Please! Please! Okay, hurry. I need you to calm down a little bit. They're on the way. Can you put yourself away? I don't want the monkey attacking you. Please hurry up! Listen to me! Uh they're on the way, ma'am. They gotta shoot him! Please! Please hurry, hurry! Are you there with your friend? I need you to help your friend. Can you go help your friend? I can't! He tried to attack me! 
now. Is he still there with your friend? Yes. Okay, so then back off. Then don't get any closer, Please. okay? They're already on the way. Please. If the monkey moves away from your friend, let me know, okay? So we can try I to help your friend. No, no, I can't. She's dead. She's dead. Why Why are you saying that she's dead? She's dead. He ripped her apart. He ripped what apart? Her face? My, everything. He ripped her apart? I think I'm going to sleep. I think I'm going to pass Nope, no, just breathe, okay? I'm going to stay I with you on the phone until they get there. Listen, please hurry. Please, please hurry. <laughs> oh, my God. Sandra felt like her heart was in her throat as she watched Charla lie unconscious. Officer Frank Chiafari, who was the first to respond to the 911 call, found Travis roaming in the yard as Charla lay unconscious with her tattered clothes covered in her own blood. The enraged Travis then circled the police car, looking for an open door. Inside, Officer Frank was scared to death as the 240-pound chimp smashed the passenger window and unlocked the door. The officer fired four shots at Travis. The injured chimp stumbled into the house, got on his bed, and took his last breath. In the following months, Charla underwent multiple surgeries to restore her distorted face. Her left hand had been mauled, as well as three fingers on her right hand. Her injuries were so severe that the medical team under her care had to undergo counseling because of the trauma of tending to her. The toxicology report on Travis revealed that he had been dosed with Xanax, which may have fueled his aggression. Others argued that Charla had changed her hair color and curls, making her unrecognizable as she held Travis's favorite doll, which spooked him. No matter what caused Travis to attack, Charla still lives with the trauma and scars that came with it. Constantly reminding her of the day, she narrowly escaped her final affliction.